Welcome to Tea Time Talks. You made it just in time for the flutter of butterflies. It's springtime in New York where I'm teeing. And so I think it's time to spread our wings a bit and learn about the type of bug called a butterfly. There are about 17,500 butterfly species in the world and more being discovered. And these fascinating bugs are rather famous for their beautiful, colorful wings. Did you know that butterflies and moths are the only group of insects that have scales covering their wings? But what makes the color? A strange question, right? So let's think about the paint or crayons you use at home. These types of colors are called pigments. Pigments are colors that are physical chemicals that cannot dissolve in water, unlike dye. Another type of color that we see are rainbows in the sky. These are made using teeny tiny objects called micro or nanoparticles. Rainbows use water droplets that separate out the color in light to create each different color band of the rainbow. Instead of water droplets, butterfly wings scatter light using hundreds of teeny tiny microscopic structures in their scales of their wings. Similar to rainbows, when light hits these structures, it gets refracted or bounced in and then bounced out into the air to make a specific color that we can see. We call this type of color creation structural color. Some butterflies use pigments. Some use just structural color, and many use both. Butterflies and moths are also different from other bugs because their proboscis, which is a part of the mouth of insects, it's like a permanent straw to help suck up their food, is able to coil back up. Anyone read the fantastic book, The Hungry Caterpillar? Then you'd know that butterflies first start off as eggs that then hatch into caterpillars. We call that caterpillar stage the larval stage, kind of like the infant stage of a butterfly. And just like the book, they love to eat. And as they grow and grow, they shed their skin sometimes four or more times. They eat to use the plant material to build a protective little house called a chrysalis. Some of you may have heard of the word cocoon. A cocoon is a chrysalis that is covered with a layer of silk. In their little chrysalis, the third phase of the butterfly's life begins, the pupa stage. Here, the caterpillar transforms its body from this to this. Although the caterpillar phase may hurt plants by eating them, the butterfly stage is essential to allow plant pollination. Without them, some plants can't make more plants. Butterflies feed on the sweet nectar of flowering plants, sometimes one type or a variety of related types of plants. When they do this, the female female butterfly leaves her eggs. One of my favorite species of butterfly is the monarch butterfly. Scientists, including citizen scientists like you, helped us discover how they migrated or moved from place to place. What they do is in fall, they rest in beautiful Oyamel fir trees in central Mexico. Then beginning in the spring, they travel all the way north up to Canada, a journey of 3,000 miles. They follow the growth of milkweed, one of their favorite plants, and fly up 30 miles a day. They then return back to Mexico in autumn. It takes three to five generations. That means kids, parents, grandparents, and then sometimes great-grandparents and even great-great-grandparent butterflies to make one complete migration path to leave and return to Mexico. Other butterflies in the United States make migrations too, though not as rigorous as the monarch. These include some like the buckeye, the painted lady, the purple wing, the great southern white, the cloudless sulfur, and the little sulfur. Sadly, the number of monarch butterflies has decreased by 90% over the past 20 years. But here's how you can help. The monarch butterfly migration happens two times each year. In order to fly, butterflies need energy. You can help by planting plants that give them energy to fly. Butterflies also need milkweed plants because this is the most common plant they use to lay their eggs. There are a variety of species across America and you can plant the right species for your region in your own garden to help the monarch caterpillars grow and turn into butterflies. Also, we need to make certain to reduce the use of pesticides that can be killing the butterflies. All great ideas, wild ones, so stay wild and let's save butterflies.
Hello, wild ones. Subscribe to this channel to learn more fun facts about animals and nature.